the same thing that happened in the 90s of all of a sudden, okay, everybody speaks email. It, yeah, n now has email or now um, it has a computer and internet. It's like automatic, you have to do something on Facebook as well. So just, I mean, it's just part of the today's culture that I think is just getting ingrained. I think I read before I moved here that 83%, I think, of the town residents have high-speed internet access. And, you know, it, it's just something people do. It's, it's how you stay connected here. They've adapted these things as a part of their, their daily lives. Um, and the university, you know, they, they have their own methods of, of reaching out to people electronically at any time that they need to get a, a specific message out. So that sort of sets it into people's minds and, and makes it makes it more comfortable for people to use it, I think. You get a lot of text messages from the town about different things that are going on. They're real good about, you know, keeping things updated on their websites. And, I mean, if you have a question about something, it's very easy to get the answer. We were blogging before blogs were popular. Whenever there's announcements going out, you can receive an email. Then it goes out on WTOB, um, and then the town's Facebook page, and then on Twitter. I use TweetDeck, and I have a whole column just for people in Blacksburg. That's why I can follow everybody what's going on, what people are doing, or finding out local events. It's just an accepted form of communication, whereas when I was in Virginia Beach, the first thing somebody would do if they needed to get in touch with you, the communication would be to pick up the phone. Whereas here, they're probably going to tweet you. It's like a thing in town called Up on the Roof that I'm a Facebook member of. They do that once a month. Because they'll fill out a howdy card for us. I can go and look up their name on Facebook, see their picture. When they come back to church the next week, I can say, man, man we're so glad you came last week. And it, it's, it does, it's, it's remarkable. I can take a message, I can, it's like picking up a bunch of little rocks thrown in the water. And so that message, rather than making one big splash, is a bunch of little splashes which kind of go off in all different directions. They bounce into each other, they go in different directions, and so the message has a further reach. Um, we're always evolving, just as the technology evolves, we find new ways of doing things and using it. The social media is, is a good tool for building community uh, in, the, in the real world face-to-face -face sense. A lot of our friends will, um, you know, tag us and say, you know, you, you need to see this movie. I saw it last night. It was really great. I just threw it out there that I need a doctor in Blacksburg and boom, somebody recommended somebody. I had an appointment the next day. With Twitter and with Foursquare, um, that's primarily come from customers that when they come in, they say, hey, are you guys on Twitter? Because I'd, I'd like to follow you, you know, if you've got stuff going on. Are you guys on Facebook? Or are you on Twitter? And um, I was like, can I just start that for you? And they're like, okay, sure, just, you know, do it. I created a, a Facebook group for my son's Little League team. It's kind of like if the grandparents want to communicate, they've got to do it. My, my son's grandparents want to see pictures of him. They need to go on Facebook. That's all there is to it. It's not difficult. When I'm on Foursquare, I have friends who are doing stuff in places, and it's like we are together in a place. It's a, it's a, um, we're, it, uh, Twitter and Facebook are like connecting spirits and minds and hearts, but to have a, a sense of shared location is a comfort and a reassurance and in some ways an inspiration. It, it's a great way, like especially in Blacksburg where there's a lot of people using Foursquare and it's a small town that if you're trying to decide where to go for lunch, oh, you know, so-and-so's over here, you know, I'll go say hi to them. It's, you know, to start that conversation. I like being able to walk down the street and, and wave to people that I know. And so that one definitely, the, the, the local badge definitely fits with the way I see myself interacting with this community. It's kind of like Foursquare saying, yeah, we, we see that too. And I think that's kind of cool. But for a town this size, it's pretty fascinating how, how much people have, have adapted it and made it just a, as much a part of the, the sort of technology culture here um, and the social culture, the real social culture, which, you know, there's Blacksburg tweet ups, Foursquare does the swarm badges um, and things like that to go to this place and, and, 
to actually meet face to face and have a conversation. So uh, it, it's pretty cool to see it happen in Blacksburg. I think having that kind of communication helps me keep in touch with everyone in Blacksburg and what's going on and what's the different events. It's kind of fun. We just got a neighborhood pool, and there's some people who, you know, when they go up to the neighborhood pool, they check in. Well, the kids have to be supervised, so I can send a text message out and say, hey, would you mind if I send my son up there? I'll be up in about 15 minutes. Back in December, um, I was diagnosed with cancer, with skin cancer, and, you know, when I would check in at the surgery center, friends would see, oh, you know, good luck, Tina, or, you know, we're thinking of you, that kind of thing, and it was, it was a real boost to me. Talking about community earlier, Easy Chair is a community. Coffee shops are communities. I mean, whether in your big big city, you know, everybody goes to the little coffee shop on the corner that's right outside their building. You get everybody from the high school students that are studying for a test to the retirees who just left the, the gym. I'm the mayor, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Last time I checked, it was uh, Jeremy Hart, but uh, he's been in a fierce battle with a few other patrons. <laughs> so, How's that going? I think he's pretty safe, and I think he'll be the incumbent for a long time. We'll Let's see. A, I heard there was a coup that Kimberly Powell's <coughs> ousted him for a little bit. Briefly, maybe. That's how Jeremy and I met, because when I took it over, he literally just about died. And all of a sudden I see a tweet, I am the mayor of a particular place. And that was what it was intrigued me. And so uh, he is the first person, he's the person who said, and why aren't you on Twitter? And so if he's on Foursquare, I'll try it too. I am using it to build relationships. Foursquare, it certainly helps that I have fun doing it too. You know, it's not like I'm like, oh, I gotta yeah. check in. It's, it's fun. I think if you... Follow the leader. If you get one to do it, yeah. then I think a lot more would start doing it. Yeah. Facebook is really useful to me uh, for events type of scheduling. This afternoon, 2 o'clock, we have a cupping uh, of two new coffees that we brought in. One really helpful aspect of it is the feedback we've gotten from people about what times we schedule these things at. If they were on this day or during this time, it might be easier for me to come out. We, we remind people that it's Free Popcorn Monday every, uh, just about on every every Monday on the Facebook page. Not only do people feel like they're getting a bargain, but they feel like they're in a, like a kind of a uniquely special, cool, funky place because, you know, Regal's never going to give you your popcorn for free. Mm -hmm. My fourth follower is a guy who now lives in Colorado who I didn't know, I knew of him, he lived in the area here. He knew his name, um, he started following me and a couple weeks later, we never had a conversation, even on Twitter. Never had a conversation and a few weeks later he, he sent, me a, sent me a message and said, my wife and I would like you to come talk to us about selling our house. Um, he said, I feel like I already know you. Yeah, so I, I think the learning curve is, um, you get past that, what do you do for a living, you, you know, that sort of thing, where are you from, and um, you know a lot about each other already. I was taking a flight on vacation out of Richmond and I just tweeted out that I was going to be flying out of Richmond and I got a, a message back from the airport saying we hope you have a nice flight. <laughs> and then when my flight landed they sent me another message saying you know we saw everything you know you landed on time I hope to see you know let us know when you're coming back which I mean sounds really silly but I had a choice of three different airports to go out of, and as weird as it might seem, it kind of seems like the airport cared that I flew out of Richmond. That the more that we show our artists going out and doing something, the more that we invite the community to come into the art gallery and do something, people will notice us more. And then they'll go, oh, I didn't realize they're doing that. Let's go check it out. And that's what I would advise a local partnership to do. is Because you don't always want to talk about sales because then you become a spammer. And we need to start having events. We need to start uh, having the community talk with us and have them input. Uh, have something where, hey, you know, we want to see what car you have. Yeah, uh, we're getting, you know, a lot of people are for Twitter or 
mentioning 622. I had a great meal there and really enjoyed the wine. The staff was friendly. So. To tell you, I didn't think people read that stuff. I mean, it, it, I, I mean, I was blown away that people, the very first night we opened, we didn't know we were going to be open until 4 o'clock that day. We opened at 4 o'clock. And we had 150 people in there. I thought, where did they come from? And so many of them came up to me and said that they'd read it on the, the blog or the Twitter or whatever it was. I said, <laughs> it just, it kind of blew my mind. And uh, it's been that way since, the, since we opened. And the response to it has been uh, beyond my wildest dreams. Very excited that they're hearing responses of people are coming in and checking into Foursquare. I just think it'd be great for, you know, detailed numbers of when certain groups are checking in. Like, okay, well, you know, the frat people come at 9.30 at night, let's do this for them. Or, you know, we have the older dinner crowd comes in at 6, so we'll even have as many people working, or you just be able to even time your specials better. I have found that new customers, a lot of times the way they found out about us was actually from a referral from somebody either on Facebook or on Twitter, um, Foursquare, uh, you know, just sort of a nudge from a customer, hey, you should check this place out because they'll see one of their friends just checked into another place on Foursquare. You should give these guys a try if you like that, you know, because I'm over here right now, you know. And, and we've seen a direct impact from that, having people come in and say, never knew you guys were here. When somebody finds out that, you know, their neighbor or a friend or a coworker is there all the time, that that's the best testimony you can have as, as a business owner about, you know, the quality of your products or your services is to have several people sort of vying for the, the, the claim of this is my place. So I, I would just tell people to sort of uh, back away from the skepticism a little bit, you know, give it a whirl.